Hi. <clears throat> hey, hello. Welcome back. I am once again exhausted. And I I swear every stream I start, like just completely tired. And I really don't want that to be my thing. But at least today you can thank the cats for it. <clears throat> Last night they decided to be just the worst. Just awful, absolutely awful shithead gremlins to each other. We love them, but they're, they're horrible, jealous, petty bastards to each other, and we, we don't know why. They have no reason to be. But two of them, the oldest Waffles and the youngest Muffin, decided to just fight constantly all evening. So we separated them, and then Pancakes, the middle one, just howled and cried all night, starting at like 3 in the morning. Horrible gremlin bastards. We love them so much. They're so cuddly. Anyways. Um, yeah, I would, would have liked to have started around like 6.30, but just stuff got in the way. We were busy with stuff. Um, but I've got... Oh, there's a fruit fly in my eye. Get out of here. But I've got three bone boxes saved up. So let's get to it. Alright, so first off, I need a beer. Yeah, it's an alright check, Pilsner. But, anyways. So my last bone box video... Well, the only one I've done so far. Completely failed miserably. It, it stopped recording. Everything was all jittery, single frame. The audio came through fine. So you get to hear plenty of me gushing about these skulls and, and not seeing them. But, so since I'm never going to upload that one, this is going to be kind of a complete redo. So... When, when Dr. Wife and I went on our honeymoon, we went down to Florida, went to Universal Studios and stuff. While we were there, we passed, um, it's like the Orlando Welcome Center. Lines up good. And I believe it's closed now, but for a brief while, there was the Osteological Museum display there. And they also run Box, which is part of, um... It's a mail order subscription box where every month they send you a skull, a cleaned animal specimen skull, along with like a little side item. Sometimes it's other bones, sometimes it's other parts or things. I think I've gotten some uh, acrylic bugs. Speaking of acrylic bug, it's spider. There she is. I've got I've got to redo or I've got to add a layer to the top because if you if I can hold it, you can kind of see that she uh right at the surface on this side. But she also lost the color of the hourglass, which is kind of a shame. But this this is finally hard, and it's not the same resin as the main body, but it helped smooth everything out. Um. This was a chemical resin, this was a UV resin on the sides and bottom. So I'm just going to fill this in with more UV and just let it sit in the sun for a while. But I've got two males now that I found, and so they're going to be added to their own little block. And because i got two of them, I can do one down and one up. That'll be a nice little display specimen. But let me set that over here. Um, but... That's the story behind those. Oops. So that's that's how. It, oh shit! Pulled my blade out. But that's how I, how we found the bone box stuff. Yeah, you know, should be tighter now. Um, but I've I've been subscribed to them for a few years, and I've, I've got I mean I've got some repeat skulls, but 
Sales have all been really nice. Let's open this first box. It's a little ad card. Draft all in paper. Oh, damn. The first, the small item. And those, those samples all, all range in different sizes. So the sample item for this, this is March, this might be March's, uh, is a red fox claw. Just a little one. I've got a red fox skull. Um, one of my roommates was doing some animal pathology classes. And he found a roadkill red fox. It was fresh, I hope. I hope it wasn't gross. But he took it home and he I'm I'm walking back from class and I'm walking down the street where our apartment is and I've got like this hint of bacon kind of smell. I'm like, oh cool, someone's grilling grilling or cooking or something. It smells pretty good. And as I get closer to my <laughs> to our apartment, it gets stronger and thicker. And by the time like I'm on our porch, like I am choking back vomit, this Bacony smell is so strong that I, I'm gagging. It is awful. I go inside, and my roommate is boiling a fox head so he can get the skull. Our fridge was a horror. <laughs> Another roommate had snakes, and he came back one day with just a sack full of dead hamsters. It's like, oh, what you got in the fridge? Well, we got uh, some popsicles, but they're behind the hamsters, and underneath the hawk and owl are, uh, that's where the frozen peas are. But it was fun. Fucked up, but fun. Anyways, I kind of wish I had opened this one last. It's going to be hard to be... In bubble wrap, let me get the bubble wrap on. <laughs> What'd you get for Christmas, buddy? Oh, we got a puppy! A domestic dog skull. Oh yeah, and also each one comes with like a little little factoid card for the animal, for the critter. Alright. This month we get a juvenile domestic dog, so it is a puppy. My head's twisted. Come here, come back. There we go. They're currently between 200 and 400 recognized breeds of domestic dogs. Selective breeding has resulted in the variety of physical characteristics or phenotypes found in domestic dogs. This skull is that of a juvenile and may show evidence of recently formed bone tissue, a process called ossification. During the process, the tissue undergoes calcification and layers of bone are created. Another difference between a juvenile an adult domestic dog is the presence of deciduous teeth, also known as milk teeth. These teeth are the first set of teeth in the growth and development of many animals. Baby teeth. Open the jaw and look behind each tooth. You may see another tooth enclosed in the jaw beginning to emerge. These teeth will begin to fall out around four months of age. The last teeth to be replaced are the largest, the canine teeth, at around six months of age. The deciduous teeth will have ultimately be replaced with 42 adult teeth. Some breeds have fewer than 42 standard adult teeth. Smaller breeds like the Shih Tzu or Pug have a smaller palate and cannot accommodate as many permanent teeth. Well, I don't see any milk teeth. It's be kind of big for a young puppy. This is not my first puppy skull, but this is well, certainly one of the nicer, larger ones. So, looks like... Okay, I was, I was wondering if the orbital was cracked, but it looks like that's symmetrical. Yeah, skull isn't fully fused in spots. His teeth are all there. Some of, the, some, of the, some of the skulls I have have, like, a gray or brown tooth or some of the teeth are missing. I think the ears are in there. Yeah, just the ear holes. Hold on. Alright, I'll focus the camera. Yeah, that's the ear hole there. 
Bark, bark. <laughs> oh, a puppy. Some nightmare before Christmas. Christmas gifts right here. Um. Thanks. Yeah, I've got some coyotes, dogs, puppies, foxes, um, cats, kittens, various rodents, a few birds. I've got a parrot, a bat. The rattlesnake one is real nice. I wish I knew more about animal bones. I could explain more. Mandible, orbital, the uh, palette. I don't know. The bones look cool, but I'm not an animalologist. That was my roommate's. I was the chemist in the basement doing sketchy shit. We used to live next to a graveyard. All right. It's gonna be hard to top that. Let's see what the second box is. This one already feels small. Oh, that's neat. All right, so this side item is a stingray barb. Kind of hard to look at. Yeah, it's just, it's just like pointy. Sometimes it's bagged, this one is not. Stingray barb. Oh, it is a little bit jagged. Let me grab the small lens. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. A little bit, real small serrations, nothing real jagged. Hmm. Still wouldn't be fun though. To get in the ankle. Testicle. Alright. Soon we go. Skull. This is another one I've got a couple of reasons for. There's a different kind of card. This one is a muskrat. Semi-aquatic rodent known for its dense waterproof fur and webbed hind feet, which enable it to swim efficiently. It possesses, possesses, possesses a long scaly tail that aids in balance and serves as a propeller. They are also excellent burrowers, constructing intricate lodges and tunnels in wetland habitats. I didn't know snap and turtles eat them. Here is a little muskrat skull. Nice. A lot of the rodent skulls are basically just the same but scaled up. Oh, his jaws must have been broken. It's kind of uh, crooked. Oh yeah, his face is real crooked. I wonder if his teeth weren't... Uh... Oh yeah, and his teeth are worn unevenly too. Interesting. So tooth enamel is orange, naturally, so slightly yellow teeth are actually healthy. Super white teeth are, are not. It means they've been stripped of their enamel. Um, but being a rodent, their front teeth never stop growing, so they have to constantly gnaw and chew things to, to wear them down, or else they'll, they'll circle around and grow into their skull. Um, judging by the fact that his teeth aren't touching like this, and his jaw is offset. I wonder how how badly offset it was. It's like it almost looks like yeah, it almost looks like it was 
sitting around there. Hmm. Well, I wonder if that's helped contribute to its death. There we go. A little muskrat skull. Whoops. This one isn't going to sit together too well, so I don't think I'll be replacing the one on my shelf with it. But I'll put that one back in the bag. It's, it's nice, though. Like I said, it's probably going to be hard to live up to the dog skull. Let's open the third and final one. All right. I'm going to have another card. Well, this might be the mark. Oh, yeah, they recently changed um, their subscription handling. So that's just a notification that changed. All right. Mako Shark Tooth. In Maori, the word Mako signifies both shark, shark tooth, shark and shark tooth. Shark feet feature in many Polynesian tales. Short fin mako sharks boast an impressive 12 rows of razor sharp teeth, capable of cutting through their prey with ease. A small handful of shark teeth. Do I have a tiger? I don't think I have a tiger shark tooth. I've got a megalodon tooth. You can find those a lot, like apparently down here. You go waiting through the swamps, and if you're not eaten by an alligator, you can just kind of dig in the mud and find them. So here's another small one, but it's also a rodent. Some of some of the um, the finer skulls, smaller ones are actually more expensive because they um, they're just harder to like clean properly. Oops, sorry, I dropped something. Hold on, wait, there it is. It's tag. All right, free squirrel. Probably gray school. Family Skiridae. The tree squirrel is a prolific rodent that thrives in almost every environment throughout North America and a great addition to your skull collection. Obviously, we can't overlook these chompers. The tree squirrel has very strong incisors with a distinctive orange stain. The orange stain is a result of a concentration of iron salts that discolor the outer layer of enamel, strengthening the tooth. As with most, most rodents, the... <clears throat> The tree squirrel is very quick to reproduce. In fact, the UK has such a problem with gray squirrel population that a recent study suggested that 80% of the squirrel's population could be harvested each year with no ill effects on the species. Damn. But here is the squirrel. Another little guy. The teeth are thicker. Let's compare the skulls. Let's pull the muskrat out, back out. Hi, pancakes, what are you doing, buddy? Please don't scream all night. That was kind of fucking terrible. Alright. Squirrel and muskrat. The squirrel's skull is much thinner and lighter. It also moves smoother than this guy's. Oops. But then again, this guy's skull is all lopsided. Both rodents, but the, the skulls are pretty differently shaped. I don't know if I got the squirrels lined up. There we go. There we go. I was hooking it around the wrong part. There it is. It's got a fuzz stuck in its teeth. There we go. Just another little tiny skull. So it's almost translucent. Let me pull out a light. Let's 
Grant. Oh, that looks kind of okay-ish. All right, it looks better in person, but then the way the camera's picked it up, but. Little squirrel light bulb. New arts and crafts project. Nightmare chandeliers. Anyways. Oh. Did you freeze? See my hands moving around. It seems a little laggy. Yeah, it's a bit laggy. Alright, before I use up too much computing power with my potato computer. Um, that's kind of all I had for tonight. Tomorrow, nothing. But on Friday, let's paint up Tom Bombadil. That'll be the, the pa Friday's painting stream. Squirrel. A squirrel. Yeah, buddy, a squirrel. Candy boy. Pancakes, what you up to, buddy? He's hopping around, he's rummaging around the uh, empty boxes. A squirrel, a puppy, and a muskrat. Not bad. Um. Probably do another one of these in a few months, just so I can do three at a time. So that'll be early June. Um, yeah, not too much planned for tonight. Just gonna relax, try to catch up on some sleep. Thanks to the cats. I love those jerks. They're such jerks. I hope they shut the hell up tonight. <laughs> Um, but Friday, we'll paint up, uh, as soon as I stop having a stroke here. You got, you got it? Nope. Come here. Hold on. Oh boy. Come on, potato computer. I'll only block the camera. Oh, it's taking a while to reset. It's also very laggy. How's this? Is this better? That's better. All right. So Friday, we'll paint up Tom Bombadil. Um, and then I think at some point, I want to go get Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door out of storage. I'll play that on stream. But until then, I will see you all Friday. Have a good evening. See you later.